is a full bloom interview with bassist Rick Fox. If you'd like to be notified as more from this interview is uploaded, hit the subscribe button and click the bell. It's funny because I had interviewed Terry Glaze and he was the original singer in Pantera. He was the singer before Phil came in and replaced him. But I think when I did the first interview with him, um, no one had ever done an interview with him at that point. Nowadays, I look and there's like 10 million freaking interviews. Was our interview kind of that first interview yes. where you went into the yes. detailed history? I posted that on my page this morning. I said that, you know, you were the one that kicked open the, the, the door with for me. And, and I did my first Internet interview with you. I think it was either 2005 or 2006. And uh, yeah, and, and you were the first one. And I think you said that. I, I remember saying to you, I didn't know any, anyone would really have any interest in anything I would have to say. Yeah, that kind of gives you an indication of how I've been kicked around in the business. But yet you said something to the effect of, yeah, like I got like 40,000 hits in the first three months off, off of your off of your uh, interview. So, yeah, the people are interested. I was I was shocked. When I was a kid, I would think, I wonder what happened to that dude from Steeler? Because everybody had kind of gone on into other things like Ron Kill and DeKeel, of course, Ingve Malmsteen, and then even Mark Edwards showed up in a band called Lion. And then when I tracked you down, I remember telling you about the time when I had visited my dad out in California when I was probably around 15, 16. And right, I, right. I remember yeah going somewhere like he took me to some of the clubs just to drive by them and picking up a publication and it was like sin was the number one band or voted best band in la or something like that and i remember oh shit there he is music connection magazine had a fan poll a reader poll and we got voted the top drawing hard rock metal band in california for consistent shows over keel striper and odin and the first number one position was uh, Jimmy Mack, I think, who was in a, in a heart attack or something. And it was, I forget who the other band was. And number three was us, was Sin. So, and Keel, Striper, and Odin were further down in, in the poll. Yeah, I, I remember you saying that your dad took you there, yeah. Um, so let's just start with, like, I know you're playing in bands on the East Coast. You're well-established playing gigs and stuff like that. But just that first call, can you talk about that first call to join Wasp and how all that went down? Yeah, uh, I was um, I was in a playing with a club circuit band in Jersey and upstate New York called Aggressor with uh, guitarist David Ferrara, who unfortunately has passed away. Uh, and David was one of the up and coming Pistolero guitarists that was on Mike Varney's US metal series. So there's there's like a first uh, establishment of Mike Varney's name early on before I even knew who he was. And we're, we're playing the, you know, the Jersey and upstate New York circuit, doing all of the top 40 hard rock metal cover stuff, you know, uh, Scorpions, Van Halen, Iron Maiden, you know, Saxon. And, all of that stuff. And, and uh, I was also a day job. I was working down in Manhattan in an area called the Village, the West Village, you know, and on 6th Street. And I was like two doors down from Electric Lady Studios. And uh, these guys walk in, kids to me back then. And, and they were vacationing, I guess, in, in New York. They came, they flew in from California. I think they said they were going to see a Twisted Sister Fest, should play at some festival or something. And, you know, here's me behind the counter in this clothing store looking like punky meadows or whatever and they're like wow who are you and, and i said you know rick fox i play with this band aggressor and that's it and like that and i said but yeah i'm friends with twisted sister now to people who are from out of state saying that you're personal friends with their idols is almost as good as them meeting the idols themselves because it's like one removed i guess that that one like we did on our first interview that degree of separation so that's where that ties in and i said yeah i'm, I'm friends with mark mendoza i knew him from when he was in the dictators and he used to come watch our band sin rehearse and then uh you know he'd invite me to come he got the gig with twisted sister and he'd come and say come come and see me play with i hang out with mark while he was playing with twisted sister out on long island so they came they said they were there on vacation it was to see twisted sister at this festival and then kiss comes up and I said, well, I know the guys in KISS. And again, the jaws drop. They hit the floor. You know, like, you could have told them you were a god. These guys would have believed it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I told them the brief story about you know, I went out with Peter Chris's sister, and, and I was at the early KISS shows, and et cetera, and so forth. And, and they said, hey, you know, we know a band in California that might be you might be interested in. And I said, what would make me want to leave New York? I could never imagine in a million years going to California. 
that was just beyond my scope to absorb that at that particular moment. And uh, they said, well, you, you kind of look like you'd fit in with this band. I had no idea who they were talking about. They said, do you have a picture or anything we can take with us back? And I, I looked at my bag and I had a, a stage, a little picture of me on stage when I was with the E. Walker band, uh, the Jersey club circuit band. And they said, yeah, this will work. And I didn't, I have a phone on at the time. Uh, my neighbor would let me accept calls right across the hallway. My neighbor and his mom, uh, they let me get phone calls there. I didn't tie it up or anything. But So I gave them that phone number. And I thought they were going to come over and visit my apartment in Jersey City to see my KISS collection and stuff like that. But they never showed up. They went, ah, whatever. I'm never going to see these guys again. It, it's, it's a moment and it's gone and the picture's gone and that's it. Then I carry on my life. And about, oh, Two or three weeks later, this is this is probably like late summer, early fall of 1981. And I, I get a phone call. My neighbor knocks on the door and says, you have a phone call from California. I, really? Oh, OK. So I go across the hall. I, I get on the phone. I'm standing in that kitchen having this conversation with Blackie Lawless. So Blackie calls up. He says, yeah, I got your number from these guys. And what's this? What's in you know, the East Coast there? He twisted. I said, so they actually did give you my number. And, the, and he goes, yeah, and I saw the picture. And uh, he says, oh, well, I'm from New York, too. And like that. And he was part of the New York rock scene that I was actively playing on. But I never heard of him. And I'd never seen him play. So I'd never seen him in the clubs or anything like that. So anyway. So we're having a conversation, and he says, maybe you should consider auditioning for us. And I said, well, I don't know your songs. I don't know anything about you. And we agreed to kind of exchange information. Um, me being in bar circuit bands, I didn't really have a demo. We weren't doing originals. So all I could send him was newspaper ads with my pictures in it, you know, headlines or something, reviews, things like that, flyers. And, and he said, oh, that's okay. You can send me that. And, I, and he sent me a tape of uh, their songs, and they had a band called Sister. And it had like Sex Drive and uh, some of uh, uh, his early stuff. Silver Rain, which was like his takeoff on, on John Lennon, uh, Black, just Blackie the Guitar doing Silver Rain. Um, they had some really, really heavy, hard rocking stuff. I, 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 wasn't, I didn't hear anything like that before. So we kind of talk to each other back and forth on the phone uh, once in a while. And he's trying to convince me to come out to California. And he says, well, you know, you can stay where you're at. That's comfortable. He's just giving me like this, this Zen type story of you could be like the bug on the leaf and you could stay back by where the stem is thicker and be safe and not be blown off by the wind. Or you could take a chance to come out to the edge of the leaf where it's much sweeter, but you stand a chance of getting blown off anyway. That this kind of stuff. He was good with these stories. So one thing led to another and made an arrangement to have me flown out to California. So uh, I got a new case for my base. Uh, he, he got me a plane ticket, and uh, which was, I think it was Capital Airlines, were no longer in existence. I tore up the cushions on one of my couches to wrap around one of my base heads to take with me like that, because I didn't know if they had gear or anything like that. You know, I'm walking into a situation across the country. I don't know what they've got. And he's like, hey, no, how tall are you? Well, everybody in the band's like six feet tall. I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm getting asked questions. I, we never thought was important on the East Coast like that. I'm like, what is this, Kiss or something? How tall are you? And, and what do you weigh? And what do you look like? Anyway, so I fly to California. I'm getting off the plane. Uh, I'm walking down the, the ramp out of the, out of the plane. And I see that there's like, you know, the average height of, of a person is like five, 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 six, something like that in the crowd. I see this tall, dark black hair sticking up out of the crowd that's blackie and, and i'm wearing boots with heels on them like that so i'm not quite as tall as him but i'm up there and and like that so we met and i met randy piper and uh, tony richards and uh mike solid they were all up at the airport yeah the whole they all came together you know randy randy drove his own van and they put my gear in, in his van which he took to the studio and i'm thinking what a nut i was they could have taken my shit and gone anywhere with it but uh, Mike Solon was driving Blackie because his car wasn't working. It was kind of messed up. Now, for those who don't know, Mike Solon is the brother brother of Eddie Solon, who was Ace Fraley's guitar tech and like their sound, early sound man. Mike Solon is also the guy who's the bartender in the Wasp video, Blind in Texas. Mike used to drive us around to rehearsal or come and take us out to a club. And this went on for several months until he got sick of it because, you know, I was like, Black, you got to get your car fixed, man. I, I can't keep coming from work and then pick you up and drive you there and wait for hours and then go home late. And my wife's getting mad. But anyway, so, you know, and Mike was pretty cool. Mike's funny. He was, he was a great guy. 
So they take us, they take me back to Blackie's house in Hollywood, and, and we're, we're talking until the jet lag can kind of wear off. And he's telling me all these stories about Hollywood and how this and that is completely different from New York, and it's going to be difficult to get used to because the people are like stabbing in the back kind of thing. And watch, you know, don't, you know, don't trust anyone. This is funny coming from him. Don't trust anyone. Um, and he's got this little library on the wall, and it's, he's got a little cottage uh, on, on Las Palmas right off the fountain for anyone who knows the Hollywood area. A little rental cottage, and and it's like one big room with a curved ceiling, and then there's like this step ladder, not a step ladder, but it's like step like like regular steps, like you would walk up like a building, but they're wooden, and they go up to a loft upstairs off the off the floor, and you climb into this little window, and that was his his sleeping area, and it was just like a mattress. Uh, he had when he did uh, a black, he did the last two shows with the New York Dolls on the Red Patent Leather Tour to replace Johnny Thunders, who was like full heroin, I guess, at the time. And I don't I don't remember how he said he got the gig, but he, he, he had, what the, my point is, one of the things he had stapled to the ceiling in, in his loft was the red communist flag that he swiped from from the Dolls would be when he left after the, those, those two shows. And of course, like he had centerfold, like Playboy and Penthouse, the picture stapled to the inside the framework of his his little sleeping loft area. So the, the the song where he sings the lyrics, I got pictures of naked ladies on my wall. That's true. That's factual. And it, it was a cheap little mattress, you know, a little blanket and a pillow. He's very Spartan, very Spartan, you know, to set up like that. And downstairs he had a, a little, a small, like a, I don't know, four or five inch, like a, a raised area like a platform, wooden platform. And he had a throne sitting on it, some wooden carved, wooden Mexican throne. And he'd sit there, and he had his guitars on the side, he'd pick up his guitars and play while sitting in the throne. I'm, I'm told he'd serenade the girls he'd bring back from the clubs like that. Uh, you know, word got around, that's what he did. And he go, did he bring a girl home and serenade her with the guitar with the Beatles songs? I said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, that's Blackie. He had a, a an orange velvet seat in there and a really funky, shaggy kind of carpet. So he had this little library with these books in it, and and it was like by uh, you know about the Nazis and Goebbels and 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 all these you know uh, Hitler's henchmen, and he, that's when I first heard the story about when you tell a lie enough times, it, it starts to become the truth. People start to believe it. You can manipulate people into believing things that aren't really true. Little did I know that that was going to play out. Too 